Hello Tubesters, it's me Gav. Welcome to another one of my videos. Today we will be looking at a 28mm Avonpost figure. He's a metal French voltageur from looking at the, uh, the, sh the shorter tails on the back of his jacket. I suppose we're looking at 1812 plus. Uh, uh, what else was I going to tell you? Sorry, I've told you all this on the video that I've been painting him on. All I've done is paint his trousers. That's the only time I've got in the day to do them. Uh, Apologise if you wanted to see more, but it's just going to have to go like the other figure, bit by bit. I can't do anything else about that. I'm actually filming this, hence why we're all about, I'm normally filming in that direction. Uh, yeah, uh, so I'm just showing you different type of whites that I've done on these trousers. Uh, it might be of interest to you. As I say on the, the end of the video, it really is, I do these videos, one for myself, uh, just as you all know I've got head problems uh, I just enjoy doing them I enjoy showing sh sharing my work uh, whatever it is whether it's you know uh, figure painting or, or you know my scale modeling obviously I know a bit more about figure painting than I do scale modeling uh, yeah it just I just enjoy sharing it uh, yeah, and it's more aimed probably at, at, at people that are just coming into it figure painting as a hobby when I say figure painting uh, it's more towards you know your war game figure painting, mainly historicals uh, that I do. Uh, I don't class myself as somebody who can show you guys how to paint busts and larger scale figures. I do obviously do that stuff and I do show it when I do it, uh, but um, I'm a bit more you know head down into my shoulders when I'm talking about that stuff because obviously I'm. That's that's just a bit of fun that I do on the side, and I don't do it enough to be uh, particularly good at it. So, guys, this voltage, uh, he'll be painted in segments. That's all I can do with the time I've got, and hopefully keep the video shorter for you guys. Right, look after yourselves. Uh, there'll be another video coming up the weekend, not on this figure, uh, uh, but on my yeah, it will be the weekend hopefully on my. Uh, HMS Kent build, so a 1 in 350 scale modern F Royal Navy frigate that I'm building. Probably you guys watching this aren't going to be really interested in that, but you know what's coming anyway. But I will be sticking to, I'm no schedule, but I will be sticking to getting the videos out on this voltage. He's a beautiful little figure and uh, I, I've enjoyed doing the trousers. I've just run out of time this afternoon to, to do anything else. Uh, the call of uh, of playing with my pop Archie and then getting back to some more commission work uh, unfortunately uh, has called me back to uh, back to the real world and not for just have a bit of fun uh, painting trousers. Look after yourselves and uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Hello Tubesters, uh, I've not actually filmed the face to camera bit uh, as I call it uh, yet so uh, just to explain quickly uh, this is a 28mm metal oven post uh, figure. It's a French Voltigeur. Uh, I'm looking at the, bearing in mind I'm no particular Napoleon, Napoleonic expert, but looking at the tailbacks, uh, and this, so it's quite a short, uh, so I'd say that was like 18, 18, 12, 18, 10, 18, 12, uh, more than like 18, 12. Uh, previous to that you'd have the longer uh, tails on the jackets that would, would be down more by the backs of the knees uh, so I've been debating and debating what I'm going to do with this guy uh, as in is he going to be I did want to paint him as Swiss but uh, even with an Osprey book and going online there was so much you know what it's like with particularly French Napoleonics there's so much going backwards and forwards I thought oh I, I really you know if it was a centre company or something I might have done him but uh, I'm just going for a, a French uh, Voltigeur um, of the line and for the life of me I've just decided which it's taken ages just to find a, a regiment because again Voltigeurs with the collars and, and the piping and that uh, and, and the uh, the actual uh, flounders and the the, uh, the actual uh, cords and stuff you know it can be a nightmare but uh, I will once I've turned the camera off and we've gone back, I've done the trousers. I'm painting the trousers first. So uh, I will tell you the regiment. Uh, I've gone from one source. It's only one of those computerized drawings. 
I can't back anything up that I'm telling you, but that's what I'm going for. So I'll tell you the regiment in a minute. The uh, I'm going for a different rather than a warm base, uh, warm colours on the on the trousers. I've decided I'm going to go with a probably try this deck tan as a as a base, and then work in some silver grey. Good old standby of mine, white German tank crew, but any off white would do you probably. And uh, maybe even a touch of cold white in very highlighted places. Right, guys, the uh, the deck tan's been put on. So, whoop, where are we? There we go. Uh, I've put two coats of the deck tan on, and it will give us that. That whitey brown look, if that makes any sense whatsoever. <laughs> uh, I like it as a, as a base. I have used it before on other figures. Uh, it's just getting the, the highlights in that right and the shadow areas. Uh, I've looked at that, uh, it's one of those like computerized drawing uh, uniform guides, and uh, it says the 12th. Uh, the only difference I can see to my guy is uh, I've got the The lozenge shako plate, and uh, they're showing, I think, the eagle. Um, but I'm not going to uh, split hairs over that. So yeah, on to the next one, which I will now be putting some uh, some silver grey. It might change because sometimes things don't work out. I haven't used this mix for a while, and uh, so we've got silver grey. And we'll be putting that into our mix of, of deck tan, probably about a third silver grey, and we'll build up, we'll build highlights up a bit gentle. Right, guys, that's our first uh, highlight done with our silver grey. Again, let's just show the bottle. Uh, that was a third silver grey into the mix, uh, the original, the original deck tan mix. Uh, we'll now put some silver grey just by itself on as the next highlight, and that's how I normally work. I'll sometimes, if if I need to, you know, go add it, add more colour or or even put the pre the preceding colour extra extra into it, you know, to, to if I think things are going too bright. What you're trying to not have is that uh, when people are starting out, and even me sometimes I'm trying to rush things, you you end up trying to force the highlights and the contrasts, uh, especially with white, you'll end up with that chalky type look to it, that very patchy chalky look. So what you're trying to do uh, is is just build it up uh, in slower gradients. If you do get that, that chalky look, I would suggest making some glazes and just glaze over it uh, and, until it uh, until it merges in with the rest. Uh, it, it, it's be a bit more long-winded. Of course, you could just paint over it again and start again, but. Uh, you know, you could you could go down that route if uh, if that's what you wanted. Um, but uh, yeah, on to the next one. Well, there we go with our uh, our next highlight with the the silver grey by itself. As I say, we're just getting that nice. I, I always like this look. I, I don't paint it enough really. I tend to go to the warm warm tones because I do like those. But. Uh, uh, I do I do enjoy this, it just makes a, a, a nice change from the, the warm. I will be doing different warm, let's have a, use my paintbrush. By the way, I'm painting at the moment all this with a size one uh, Rosemary Co. Kalinsky Sable, series 33. Can't recommend these brushes enough, um, I've been using them now on all my, all my figures uh, for, what, six months? Probably more than that, a year? More than, yeah, I've got... Uh, uh, Beetle sent me some at, for at Christmas time, and I've used as, used those, and uh, I bought my own since uh, you know to, to some of the smaller sizes to obviously to, to go with the figures I'm painting. I mean, let's face it. I mean, I'm, I'm doing anything from these to these are Grumbler Militia six mils, so <laughs> yeah, it's uh, they work on anything. Not necessarily <laughs> using the the series one on those, but uh, yeah, I like those trousers. Uh, coming along nicely. We've got our uh, off-white or German tank. I can never remember what it's actually called. 
uh, white German tank crew, which is, uh, where are we? Come on, focus. There we go. Now that, focus again, please, anytime. Thank you. Uh, that's been put in again on a third mix. And now I'm going to go up to the just the plain tank crew uniform itself and we'll see what that looks like. Uh, we may, uh, well probably will do put a couple of drops of cold white in the next one above that. Then a bit of cold white and then I might work some of the shadow areas, we'll see what it looks like. Right, we've got our, our highlight of the white uh, German tank crew. Which is, as I say, quite like an off-white. So, you know I mean, don't be worried if you haven't got that. Anything like that will do. Um, and we're now, I've just put a couple of drops of cold white, which is, where is it going? Hang on a second, guys. Cold white. I've put a couple of drops of that. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as saying a third. So, <laughs> again, I'm not very good with mixtures, but, you know, a couple of drops into the previous mixture uh, just to bring a bit more you know, dazzling white to it, uh, but we don't want to go too high because it'll it'll probably wreck the the look of the, the trousers that I'm after. Right, guys, uh, just a quick catch up because I've added a couple of extra bits. If my pop Archie starts whinging in a minute, I do apologise, but he's got his whingy head on now because he wants a game. Uh, right, uh, let me see what I was going to say. Yep, yeah, I put uh, cold white into the German white tank crew uniform, so off-white more or less. A uh, couple of drops of that as I've, as I said before. Uh, then I used uh, white itself. Uh, again, don't, don't, what can I say? Don't water it down too much, but don't put it on too thick. <laughs> I know, you know you'll, you'll find your own way eventually. Um, if you put it on too thick because you're convinced it's not white enough, you'll you'll it'll look really wrong. You've gone through all that trouble of doing these layers to find out uh, to find out you've got some brilliant white stripes all over it. So just go a bit careful. I often think pick yourself somewhere that that well, it's <laughs> because it's your final highlight more or less. You're gonna you're gonna probably have to have it somewhere prominent, but uh, yeah, just be nice and easy in a in a in a particular area first before you add it. Now what I've also done, uh, I should have shown this, but I just want to get on with it because time's running out. Uh, Vallejo Old Wood. Now I'm not sure what that's going to look like in my my lights, but any sandy type colour, you know, darker sand colour. Uh, what I've done is, as you can see here, around the tops of the gaiters, I've pushed it into there. Now that's very watered down because on top of a white in the background you're going to really notice that so it has to be done quite gentle so hang on let me just get me my grimy thumb so you can hardly see that that's the type of consistency that I've put on the on the figure it's going to get a bit thicker now because I've I'm putting more on but that's the type of consistency the first one obviously it looks a bit thicker now because I've I've uh, I've put two two coats on but uh, yeah, I've shoved that into the, it's a good painting uh, word that is, uh, I've painted that uh, with downward strokes. If you're working into, I've said before, if you're working into a shadow area, a deep, a deep area where you put your shadows, uh, you need to be pushing the paint in rather than going uphill. Uh, it's, you know, get, go into whatever shadow area you want to do. Uh, I've also put it, you can see, just under uh, the vest there. I didn't want to use, you could have my favourite, say rubber black, uh, I could have used that, but if I did, yes it would work as a, as a really dark shadow, but we don't really, in this case with the colours I'm using with the deck tan and that, I didn't really want to do that, so I've, uh, as you can see, under where the, the, the undercuts are, as we call them, so under here, I've put some of that, I've, I've run a very thin trace down the seam of the, uh, the trousers there. Uh, I've put a bit th bit more heavier in the crotch area and, and up under the, the jacket itself and again very slightly so when I say heavier that means you'll you'll put in a couple of a couple of three layers on top 
and I've just put that underneath the the scabbard of the of the sword. Uh, so that's all we're going to. I'd hope to do the gaiters, but uh, as I say, I have to fit these in as and when I can. Um, so unfortunately, I, I could I could just keep saving these and do them as one video. But you know how my videos go; they they go on forever. So I just think it's best if we if we do these in sections like the uh, the last figure. So let's move out slightly, and I better do a face to camera in a bit, just so. Uh, so I'm probably going to be explaining stuff I'm going about to talk about, but yeah. So he's a he's a an Avon Post, uh, which is a Russian company. Uh, it's uh, supplied in the UK through Mez's Minis. Uh, I've, as I say, I have a connection with Mez in the sense that I've, I've painted some commission work for him, uh, but um, there's no financial transaction here. I bought these with my own money. Um, uh, so it's 28 millimetres metal. You can also get these in resin, I believe. Uh, as I said before, it comes as a, a backpack you have to stick on, which has got a nice locating plugs. You don't have to worry about them sliding off or whatever. Uh, backpack, arms are separate. There is a, a small piece you'll have to cut off uh, in the in the locating pin where they've they've poured the the re uh, the, the metal, I presume. Uh, but believe me, it comes away nice and easy with a, with a scalpel. That's not a problem. Uh, uh, you have to put it the briquette, so that's the sword. You have to put that on there. But again, very nice, easy locating pins, not a problem. And the the other arm, it locates very nicely into where he's putting a cartridge out the uh, cartridge box. So I'm not sure what we'll be tackling next. I'm half fancying to do the gaiters and the boots. Uh, we shall see. You know what I'm like. Uh, you'll <laughs> I say tell you something, and I'll I'll do something different. But uh, so yeah. Uh, hopefully that was that was you know you get of use to you uh, in painting that type of white background. Uh, as I say, you do what you want to do. Oh, sorry. Come on. Here we go. You do what you want to do painting wise. Whether you use. You know the different inks and washes. Whether you have a different, you know, you, you know, you go from say a sky grey or some type of grey up to a, you know, a, a bright white. It's your figure, your time, your brush skills. You do what you want to do with it. This is just me having fun with my own figure and wanting to share it with you guys. So look after yourselves, and we'll catch each other very soon on the next painting video.